G'day, my name's Al. For over 30 years, I've been exploring the outback of Australia in search for gold and beautiful gemstones. This adventure is about one of those journeys that takes us into the world of sapphires. So if you're into gold and gemstones, come and join me on a gem seek adventure. Gem seeking with a pick and a shovel, gonna finally get me them stones. Gem seeking, I'm a heading down the road, keep a rolling till I get me back home. This gem seeking adventure takes us to Western New South Wales in search of precious sapphires. Well, Al, I think we'll follow this creek up here into the Torrington Hills. There's a little hole up the end there. That sounds great, mate. Let's go. Right on. We'll be heading into the depths of the earth with my old mate Sid on a quest for treasure. So, this is the green hole, Sid. Yes, Al, that's the green hole. <laughs> as well as fossicking for our own sapphires. So the heavier stuff should be on the bottom by now. So we'll go over and flip her open and see what we've got. Woo! Holy! Have a look at this, Graham. Quick, come over here. Look at the size of these. Mm, we've got a nice view there. A couple of stars. And learning the ancient art of divining. Alan, you can see what I'm walking on here has actually been worked. You'll probably see something interesting here. The sapphire is starting there. Can you see where we've worked? It's right on the edge there, <laughs> right yes. Right on the edge. That's amazing. And I'll follow the pioneer's footsteps on a quest for buried treasure. And much, much more. Yeehaw! Jam seeking, I'm a heading down the road. Keep a rolling till I get me back home. Keep a rolling till I get me back home. I'm cruising up the Gibraltar Ranges in New South Wales, a climb of around 1,200 metres above sea level. And it's a beautiful day for driving to one of Australia's early pioneering regions. This township was once known as Vegetable Creek. It used to be a thriving mining town back in the 1800s. These days, the pace is a little slower in what's now known as Emmerville. Folly's General Store was first established in 1895 during the Tin Rush boom years, and today is Emmerville's fantastic mining museum. It's in here we get a good look at how it all started with tin fever. The mining history in this area was all about tin. This is crystal tin, little tiny crystal tin all over this rock here. This is ruby tin, hence the reddish colour. And this baby is a tin nugget, and it must weigh at least six kilo. Very heavy material. Finding tin for the early miners was just like us, striking gold, and they came from everywhere to seek their wealth. They toiled and survived as best they could and not knowing any better, probably enjoyed a happy life in what was then true frontier country. Fortunes were made and lost and little did they know, the byproduct of their tin mining was what we now know as precious gemstones. Only back then, they held little value. So, from what was once considered just a coloured rock, came a new source of wealth. Gem fever can get a hold of anybody. As a matter of fact, it's got hold of me, and it's time I went to find my own stones. And I know just the bloke who knows where to go. Well, Al, I think we'll follow this creek up here into the Torrington Hills. There's a little hole up the end of there, right about there somewhere. That sounds great, mate. Let's go. Right on. We're driving to an isolated area in the magnificent Torrington Ranges. This is crystal bearing country. So this is the green hole, Sid. Yes, Al. That's the green hole. Who's going down, Sid? Well, I think we'll flip for it, Al. 
Tails. Heads, your turn, my friend. I've never seen Sid lose a toss. I'm going to have to check that coin. <laughs> ah, look at this. Nice, neat little hole. Ooh, goes a long way. It's a bit of a tight squeeze, Sid. There must have been little people that did it. Exploring old mine shafts can be dangerous, so never go alone. And think safety. All's good down here, Sid. Same up here, Al. Safe as houses. <laughs> As you can see, this is a very wide drive. They're not usually this big, so they must have got a lot of material out of here. And just right at the end there is a tiny little drive at the end, and I'm just gonna go and have to have a look at that. Well, we're about 40 feet down a shaft, and we've come along about 35, 40 feet along a drive, and this is the dead end. And I can see what they're looking for here. There's a whole lot of fluorite all along, embedded into the quartz. So they've been mining fluorite. On the bottom of this, and all the rubble, there should be a fair bit of fluorite for all this burden that's been left over. And, aha! This is fluorite. This is what we're looking for. Big chunks too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a shovel, get a bag, and dig as much as this burden they've left behind here. There's quite a few little bits and pieces. And I'll get it upstairs, throw it in a sieve, and see how much we've got. Beautiful green. That is a beautiful green. <sighs> oh. Those miners work in tight places. Oh. There's a whole lot of bat feces on the bottom of this. Goes all the way down. Oh. The smell down here is so bad. Even the bats have moved out. Ooh. That's a bit of a tight hole down there. Whew. What a hole. Now let's go pull this up, mate, and I'll get this bag. That's it, I've got a couple of beauties. Good to hear. Good to hear, mate. Wow. That's a bag full. Yep. There we go. Oh, yeah. Doodles of it. <laughs> Oh well, we know where to get plenty of fluorite, mate. Little's of it. Fluorite is not worth a great deal of money, but a gorgeous green treasure nonetheless. Well, Sid, I reckon we done well. I think we deserve a cup of tea. Certainly do, Al. We certainly do. Over a good brew, we discuss today's adventure. Sid and I decide we'll catch up again soon for our spider cod vision. I was lucky enough that night to see a heavenly gem soaring through the sky. A snowball of ice and space dust. Wow! There are so many gemstones found in this area and one of the most sought after is the valuable and beautiful blue sapphire. It just so happens I've been invited to visit an old friend, Andrew Lane, who operates Aussie Sapphire. Andrew, tell me about the mining process. Well, I'm, um, I suppose with the mining process starts with finding the sapphire in the ground. We use divining rods of all things. Divining rods? <laughs> it sounds a bit crazy. Just two bits of bent rusty wire. I use a piece of sapphire, just like that. I hold that in the hand that I divine with and the, the wires will cross where the run is and they'll cross harder when the run is better. Alan, this, um, this is the divining. You can see what I'm walking on here has actually been worked. You'll probably see something interesting here. The sapphire is starting there. And you see where we've worked? It's right on the edge there, <coughs> Right yes. on the edge. So that is reasonable sapphire bearing gravel. That's amazing. The further they cross, the better the gravel is. And if I just reverse back there. That is amazing. That's the edge of the old ground again. Because I can pick up this old ground, and I can pick up the virgin ground, the unmined ground, um, saves us a lot of fuel in digging holes. Um, how good are you? Let's find out. <laughs> this is exciting. Here's the stone, just hold that in the palm of your hand. Just loose? Just, just, hold, just hold them firm, like as firm as you need to. Firm, doesn't just matter how real, hard. Really firm. Oh, glory. 
We'll see how good you are. I hope I'm good. I've got the power. <laughs> I've got the power. I'm going to yeah. do that again. That is totally amazing. Andrew, if, you, if I had heard someone told me that, I wouldn't have believed them. Well, I suppose I didn't believe in the first instance, but um, yeah, it's proven itself over the years, so I'm a believer myself now. I'm a believer. <laughs> I'm a believer. That is terrific. Once we've found the sapphire, we just dig a trench, just a bucket with trench with the excavator, and just go down to the wash level and just pull that bit of wash out, put it in the truck and bring it back to the plant. We tip it in a bin, simply wash it with a nozzle, just a big hose, high pressure hose, and that just breaks up the clumps and also feeds it down into the trommel. It helps break up clods that haven't broken up in the washing process. It also sizes the product. So all the big product goes straight through the trommel, and it's got a series of screens that, that just size out the smaller stone that, that we think might be a sapphire. After the trommel, it goes across the pulsators. Now the pulsators are just a water-filled pulsing box, basically, with screens in the bottom. Uh, sapphire and blackjack are heavy, well, much more heavy than the ironstone that, um, that they're contained in. So as the water pulses up and down, the product flows across, across the screens, the lighter material goes to the next screen and so on. Normally once a day, if we're in very rich country twice a day, physically scrape the, um, the lighter ironstone off the top of the pulsators and get down to the sapphire bearing gravel, simply scoop it out, tip it on drying tables just in the sun. Then we need to magnetic separate the ironstone content out. So we put it through a magnetic separating machine. After we separate, we get that down to a, a medium sized ice cream container full of sapphire with a trace of ironstone and stuff still in it. Then we need to sit down and I ask my mother or father to um, sit there for tweezers for probably nearly a day, nearly, nearly a full day's work for one person, uh, picking the last few little bits of impurities out just by hand. The byproduct we produce is a lot of mud. That runs down through the series of, um, of settling ponds just to settle the mud out back into the main supply dam. The mud then settles in the dams. We lift that dirt out, that mud, let it dry for a week or two, then we add that back into the back of the trucks. It goes back in the bottom where the wash originally was. And you know, we, we level that out the same sort of thickness as what it was originally. From a truckload of soil, you can expect to find about a third of a cup of sapphires. Andrew's techniques used to source these beautiful stones are all done with the environment in mind. Looking out across his farm, you can see just how well everything has been restored. I'm impressed. And these gorgeous blue gemstones are the end result. After seeing all those sparkling sapphires, I've had an offer to join a local rock hound and a gun sapphire hunter on an expedition to one of his secret spots. Graham knows this area very well and has uncovered some good sapphires here in the past, but you have to know where to look. Right, I think we'll just have a look up around here with these crevices here, Alan. There's have a nice a, little crack along here. And under these rocks, it's not very deep that water. If you move them rocks and that, there could be little crevices or gravel underneath them, see? Just roll them back all together till you find the ironstone. If you get the ironstone on that, you'll, you'll get some stone. When deciding where to fossic, you need to look for gravel beds, behind and under boulders, by the riverbank in crevices or cracks, or near a ledge. There's that bit of red rattle that goes round 
around the same areas where we're going to find the iron stone and the sapphires. Right, now I'm going to go get all this and put it in a bucket, get it over to the sieve, and give it a good wash and see what we can find. I've just taken the larger gravel off, which separates the smaller stones, which the sapphire is going to be in. And we'll sieve this off. Sieving is a real art. You need to rotate backwards and forwards so that the heavy minerals, hopefully, including some sapphires, are forced to the bottom and centre of the sieve. So the heavier stuff should be on the bottom by now. So we'll go over and flip her over and see what we've got. The chance of striking it rich can be quite addictive. Well, that doesn't look very promising. There should be a nice little puddle of ironstone at least in the middle, but there's not even that. So I guess we aren't deep enough yet. Graham certainly has it down pat. And a definite style of his own. Right, we'll see what we've got in this time. Now, surely there's something in there. Oh, yeah, there's a bit of colour there. Straight on top. See, that's a zircon, that one. There's a few zircons there. Mm, that's They're a, a clear zircon. Yeah, that's a nice blue. That's a good one. Mm. Beautiful blue. Another zircon there. Come here, in a little one. No, that's getting more to the colour. Colour, yeah. Okay. Another sapphire there. See if there's any boundary riders. Bit of a zerk on there, Graham. Yeah, a little zerk on the outside. There's a big one. Hey, that's a beauty. Mm -hmm. Don't know if it's much good or not. You see through it? Yeah, you can see through it a bit. we about eight, ten carat, that one. Oh, that's a nice colour, Graham. It's rather dark, but it is blue. Yeah, it's a bit dark. It's been pretty renowned for this area, though, for them to be very dark, though, isn't it? Oh, yeah, they, wherever you go, you'll get the dark stone, you'll get the light stone. You can't get them all the same colour, you know. You'll get dark ones, you'll get light blues and parties and greens and so forth. That's about it. So that wasn't too bad. That's a start, Graham. Yeah. Holy! Have a look at this, Graham. Quick, come over here. Look at this. Look at the size of these. Mm, we got a nice view there. Star, a couple of stars. It's got a bit of a red tinge in yeah. there. Yeah, they're both stars. When you turn it over, it's a star. See, on the, that side, see the one, two, three, four, five, six. And the same here, see? What they do, they, they cabbage on those. And they come out nice. What a find. There we go. There's, There's a dog's tooth. Dog's tooth, yeah. Yeah. It's a good size. Yeah. This is a nice looking stone. Greeny looking one, that it's one. It's a bit of a party, it's a bit fractured, but... Mm, well, yeah. this is a good sign, Graham, because we've got some decent size. Sapphires in the rough look very different from finished gems you see in jewellery. And to an untrained eye, can be hard to distinguish from other rocks. Now that's what it's all about. A beautiful, big sapphire. Deliver! Street me, Ruth! It's Ned! He wants my sapphires! After all these great adventures, it's now time to head for camp, ready for a spot of fishing tomorrow. With night closing in and the fire crackling, 
I find myself drifting, dreaming of those huge nuggets the pioneers must have found. You're dreaming, Al. We're You're rich. dreaming, mate. We're rich. We're rich. Well, let's go fishing. Oh, it's just a dream. <sighs> There's nothing quite like relaxing on a river after another great gem-seeking adventure. I hope you enjoyed the journey into the world of sapphires because there's plenty more from around this beautiful country. So I'll see you soon. And remember, look after those gems. Gem seeking with a pick and a shovel gonna finally get me them stones. Gem seeking, I'm a heading down the road. Keep a rolling till I get me back home. Keep a rolling till I get me back home.